UTRGV men's soccer makes a little history on the pitch. We'll show you how. UTRGV women's soccer with a trio of imports from across the border, but not that border. And UTRGV volleyball has its own foreign connection, but they didn't just come from Serbia together. We explore their transition from legacy institution UT Brownsville to UTRGV. All that and more coming up inside this edition of V Nation. That's V for Valley. V for Victory. And V for Victeros. This is V Nation. Hey everyone and welcome to V Nation, I'm Jonah Goldberg. The University of Texas Rio Grande Valley men's soccer team returned this year after an 18 year hiatus. And now in its 12th year of existence, the Vaqueros entered this past weekend having won just one overtime match in program history and never at home. Now, why would we set it up that way? Vaqueros playing host to Our Lady of the Lake late in the first half as Cedra Martinez with the tick, Ole tinking in with the tack, and Isaiah Hines, toe. Hines' second goal of the season, the carrot was up 1-0. Second half, the Saints continuously marching on goal, but Leo Castillo and the Vaqueros defense stand tall. Snuffing out countless attempts, Castillo finished with five saves. Now, the Saints did get the equalizer late in regulation, so now, you guessed it, we're in overtime. Chaos off the corner kick, Enrico Leighton in, Juno kick! First overtime home win in program history, the Caros win 2-1. to one. It was a big one because uh, uh, I guess we were lacking a little bit of like, confidence into California, lost few games over there, so it was a big win for us and now uh, we're ready for the VAC conference. It was, it was a good win, I mean we could have done better and uh, I, we definitely got confidence from the win and hopefully we move into practice next week and build and get ready for the next game. One of the things that we tried to do throughout the whole uh, 90 minutes was just play simple and play quickly. You know, I think that's part of our style of play. We have good technical players, but if we can move the ball at a quicker pace, then we're able to find more dangerous positions. And I think we struggled with that, and that's a, a testament to the Our Lady of the Lake guys today. They worked very hard. You know, it, it was an interesting game. There's a lot of local rivalries with a lot of players here from the Valley that know each other on both teams. So it certainly made for a competitive game, and it was. But I think from our perspective, the quicker that we were trying to move the ball, that was always going to be the key for us being successful. Here's a look at the final WAC non-conference standing. Seattle U fresh off wins over a pair of top 13 teams, tied with Utah Valley at the top, while UTRGV is right in the thick of it in the middle of the pack. The Vaqueros open up WAC play on Friday at Grand Canyon before visiting UNLV on Sunday. Well, I think it's going to be very tough. Um, you know, the, the, the teams that I know um, from watching the guys play last year, you know, have a very aggressive, high-intensity game, and that's what we're trying to prepare for. We talked about being able to move the ball quickly. We have to do a better job. If we can move the ball quickly, now we can keep up with the pace. But if we slow down our game, then it's going to be a case of now their, you know, their speed of play, you know, putting us on the back foot. So for us, the speed of play is still an area that we're focusing on greatly. UTRGV women's soccer opened WAC play on Sunday with a 2-1 loss at New Mexico State. The lone goal came courtesy of Sheridan Bacanic, her first of the season, also her first career conference goal. Alyssa Espino now with three assists and a team leading seven points. You know, in the end, they were better than us in the first half. I thought the second half we were very good. We had two, three chances to, to win the game. Uh, we didn't do that again, you know, we can, couldn't finish. And, uh, you know, they, there was a, a goal from them at the end, and um, that was it. So, in a way, the result was, uh, you know, a little, a little harsh on us. But at the same time, we just didn't play well over the complete game. Um, but again, we seem like we're making progress. One whack match in the books. Here's what the standings look like. Things start to get busier the rest of the way with two match weekends, starting Friday when Grand Canyon makes its first ever visit to the Rio Grande Valley and continuing Sunday when CSU Bakersfield follows suit. I mean, very good teams, both of them. Grand Canyon, uh, you know, very direct. Uh, both very good coaches, probably the best two coaches in our league. Um, it'll be very tough to, um, to uh, you know, 
it'll be a tough game either way. Both games will be tough. But I mean, we have our we'll have our opportunities, and it's a matter of putting them away. And when that happens, uh, we'll give ourselves a chance to win. The UTRGV women's soccer roster includes student athletes from five different countries, including three from right across the border. But it's not the border 16 miles to the south. It's the one 1,700 miles to the north. Brenda Marquez has the story. This season, the Vaquero women's soccer team welcomes not one, not two, but three Canadian players. Megan Oram hails from Calgary, Alberta, while Malia Irvine and Mackenzie McLeod come from British Columbia in the Vancouver area. Even though they've only been in the area for a few months, they were quick to grow fond of the valley. It's so really nice, and like I love it here, so it wasn't like too hard to get used to everything. I would just say like the opportunity where I get to like go to school and and play like my favorite sport every day. It's just, I mean, it's a really great opportunity, and I'm. I love it here. Adjusting to the Texas heat is one of the biggest challenges they face. Playing in like the snow and like rain to like the blazing heat is, um, it, it was really hard, but I mean, I have made that adjustment. The heat definitely part is a huge part of it. The weather is a big shock. Coming from Canada, it's like not, does not get this hot, obviously. So that was a big change. The impact of joining UTRGV as student athletes and becoming part of the team goes beyond just soccer and it is now part of their lives. It means everything. Like you guys are giving me this opportunity to like play and like do my dream, which is like play soccer and get an education and you guys are giving that to me. So like it's like everything I could ask for really. It's really cool being like the first the first class of V Nation. I think it means a great deal to me because now this is a part of who I am and this is, I can say this has been a part of my life and my experience as uh, a player in college soccer in a high level um, athletic environment as well as being in a school that has a great education system. Reporting from the UTRGV Soccer and Track and Field Complex for V Nation, this is Brenda Marquez. The aforementioned women's soccer student-athletes grew up a good 2,000 miles from here, but there are a pair of volleyball student-athletes that have them beat, making a more than 6,000-mile trek to the States. Coming up inside V-Nation, we show you how UTRGV Volleyball's Serbian connection is also their Brownsville connection. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to winning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. Two of the newest student athletes on the UTRGV volleyball team are Boyana Mitrovic and Tina Sekulic. Both made the 6,000 mile trek to the United States to play volleyball and study at UT Brownsville last year. This year, they had to travel another 65 miles to pursue their dreams. But they made this trip together. Romeo Virial has more. When they were first recruited to play for UTB under coach Todd Lowry, the two girls from Serbia were fully aware that Coach Lowry would be transitioning between jobs the following year, but liked his mentality and coaching style so much, they agreed to follow him wherever he went to coach next, which is right here in V Nation. When I recruited him, we just had a really good relationship uh, through the whole recruiting process, and they basically had told me, um, they kind of bought into what I, what I was about, and they said that they were willing to come to UTB for a year, and. Um, given the opportunity they basically wanted to go wherever I was going so it was more so they were following the staff than necessarily the school. Well we found at the end of our season that he's he has an offer to come here 
and to coach over here in this school to stay in Valley. And I mean, we had a deal before we came to UTB that we're going to stay with him. So, I mean, wherever he, he will go, I will go to. The thing that most excited the two athletes from UTB was the step up in the level of competition between NAIA and NCAA Division I Volleyball and how this would help them develop their game. The level of volleyball is much different. I mean, NAIA is good. We, we, I mean, I were in good school, but that was not the level that we are, right, that we are here right now. Here is much better. It's a big difference in the level between NAIA and NCAA. The teams are much better, taller, stronger. And of course, me as a player, I'm going to develop myself more, my technique and everything. So it's a, it's a big deal and it's a huge change, but I really like it. One of the things the UTB girls are looking to bring to UTRGV is UTB's winning tradition and consistent success. Well, UTB Volleyball was known as a really successful, I would say, because they have a, the really nice background with coach and stuff, and national championships, and really good teams behind, really good players. I would say that coach is trying to bring a, some new spirit here and bring them a winning mentality, and I hope we'll make it. We have super high goals, so we know what are those goals. We want to win this WAC conference and we're going to go there. For the two girls, it's been a huge comfort having someone to make the transition with. It also helps that these two girls transitioned together once before, not from school to school, but from country to country. Of course, it's easier to have Tina by my side, especially because we're from the same country and we kind of have the similar mentality and we're really trying to, to fit ourselves here because, I mean, it's totally different. Having two athletes who are familiar with his coaching style has been a big help to Coach Lowry, since they already know his play and coaching style and can relay it to other members of the team. We're trying to like put a system that Coach has and to try to teach the other girls to follow him. And of course, we have to adjust as well and to, to their old habits and stuff and to bring everybody to the same page in order to be successful this season. I think the big thing is, is they know what we expect. So they know how we do things. They, they know the things that, the little things that sometimes go unsaid that they had to learn the hard way or, or you learn through trial and error. They're, they're able to kind of convey those things to the, to the girls like, hey, coaches, is, is really hard about being on time. You know, if you're a minute late, we're, we're all late. And so just little stuff that sometimes programs have to have to learn the hard way. They're able to convey those messages, and they've done a good job of that. For V Nation, this is Romeo Villarreal. Vaqueros visiting Prairie View and M for one more non-conference tune-up. And is anyone else in the mood for an impromptu block party? Because that's just Haley on the block. Haley Durham with a career-high nine blocks, tied for the 11th highest single match total in program history. Eight block assists tied for the fourth highest total. Already the program's all-time leader in blocks per set, Durham now ranks second in career block assists and fourth in total blocks. Just for good measure, Durham added eight kills on 438 hitting and three aces. Vaquero's roll, 3-0. Anytime we serve aggressively and we kind of limit people's options as far as on offense, we're a pretty good blocking team. But, you know, she really stepped up and, and had, a, had a great match. The Vaqueros closed out the eighth-match road trip with the WAC opener at New Mexico State. Bowling 0-3 to what was then the 41st ranked team in the Rich Kern Poll. Three more blocks for Haley Durham. Boyana Mitrovic led the Vaqueros with nine kills. Seven each for Alicia Watson and Alexandra Ecker. Ecker also with three blocks. I thought we came out and played real tentative. You know, almost accepting a little bit of a defeat before we ever even stepped on the court. You know, they've had a great preseason and, and played some big teams really tough and, and they're a quality opponent. But I felt like we let their reputation beat us before we ever stepped on the floor. I thought we played better in game three after we took that 10 minute break and we kind of had a chance to talk about some stuff. But, you know, that's something that those are the things that we got to change. And, and that's going to take time. But, you know, we got to be better than what we were on Saturday. Here's a look at the WAC standings. As you can see, a few teams have already played two WAC matches. Full slate of matches this weekend for UTRGV as the Vaqueros return home to host Missouri-Kansas City on Thursday and Chicago State on Saturday. You know, UMKC is another good team in the WAC. Uh, they, they're, you know, split on the first weekend, both five set matches. So 
Are they the team of last year? I'm not sure. Um, but I know we've watched some film on them. They're still a very good team and uh, a team that we feel like we can we can do some things against still. And, and that'll be kind of a, a good measuring stick for us in, in the WAC. Um, we felt like the, the New Mexico State's the class of the WAC, and, and that's where we need to go as a program. Um, you know, UMKC is in that next tier, and, and that's where we want to be this season. So we got to find a way to compete with, with the UMKCs and the Sa Seattles and, and those people this year. Want to get rewarded for tweeting, Facebooking, and Instagramming about UTRGV athletics? Maybe get bonus points for checking in at home events? Now you can. Download the VFAN Rewards app on your smartphone today. It's a free download, and you can earn points to win prizes such as backpacks, hats, shirts, water bottles, and more. Need more information? Then log on to vfanrewards.com. This past summer, UTRGV Athletics brought in a new women's tennis coach. Next Inside V Nation, we get to know Coach Stephanie wooten -Kiata. One of the newest additions to the UTRGV Athletics family is Stephanie wooten Kiata, the new women's tennis coach. But she's more than just a coach. Juan Reyes has the details. Her interest in the sport began at a very young age, after watching her older sister play. My sister, my older sister Kristen, I used to be drug around all over the state of Texas to her tournaments. And I would watch her and I would get bored, so I would hit off a wall and pretend I was winning the U.S. Open against Martina Hingis. As a former student athlete, she can relate to her team and brings her own experiences to UTRGV. Some new things that our new coach has brought to UTRGV is a lot of positivity. Um, we have a lot of different types of uh, practicing. Before we would practice hours and hours, that was really intense. and. I mean, it's still the same as intense, but I mean, I think we are getting a lot more out of it because it's it's not as much pressure and our practices are still intense, but we get better quality out of that, if that makes any sense. Another thing she brings to her team is the heart and spirit of a tennis player. Her college tennis coach, Matt Yandalo, who she saw as a mentor, influenced her to take the leadership role as a head tennis coach. My coach, Matt Iandolo, in college uh, helped me out a lot. He was a major influence in my college playing career and in my college coaching career. And his influence on me and how much he impacted my life made me want to choose to be a college tennis coach. Competitive season is underway, and coach wants the team in top shape and motivated for their first match. I always like to have a specific warm-up and uh, hitting warm-up and then also stretching routine and and doing a team break before also, like a go team. <laughs> Although practice is tough, the team does not feel pressure to win. Coach Wooten makes the team feel comfortable while still keeping them focused on the sport. She, she does have a funny side. Uh, she does crack a lot of jokes. It, it's, I think it's really helpful for our, me and my teammates because we don't feel the pressure sometimes. Like we don't feel like we're pressured to play good. I mean, it's more of a fun practice, which is really helpful and motivating for us. Although the coach has only been with the team for a few weeks, she has grown on the team and they love the positivity she brings to the court. Um, the first meeting between us and the coach was at student athlete orientation. She actually confused one of my teammates for somebody else. It's like, hey, they're like, <laughs> so it was really funny actually. But I mean, it's cool. Like she's, she's a very positive person, very bubbly. Like she's awesome. We love her in the few weeks she's been here and we're really happy to have her here at UTRGV. <laughs> Reporting for V Nation, I am Juan Reyes. UTRGV men's golf with a strong showing at Houston Baptist Husky Invitational last weekend, coming in second out of 11 teams. Another tournament, another round of strong golf for Andreas Gonzalez. After a hole in one in his first tournament, the freshman followed it up by tying the program record for lowest single round score with a second round 65. Keep an eye on Gonzalez, folks. He's one to watch. I thought it was fantastic. We had two freshmen uh, each shoot in the 60s. We had a 65 and a 67. I believe the 65 uh, tied for lowest score uh, in the school's history. And then I believe our, our total tied for uh, lowest score in, in school history. So 
very pleased with how they did. I thought the golf course suited us. It was very similar to our home conditions. Uh, we have a little bit different test this week heading up to Wisconsin, uh, playing on bent grass greens and fairways and rye grass rough. So we'll be a little bit, little bit different. UTRGV cross country with a pair of meets over the weekend, starting it off at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Renee Guillen led the way on the men's side, coming in 21st with Martin Perez right behind by two tenths of a second. Michelle Flores, the leader on the women's side, the women's team came in fourth, while the men's team finished fifth. We uh, had an opportunity for the younger members of the, the team to go out and compete. Um, so we wanted them to get out there really just to compete. You know, it was nearby, so it was easy for us to get up there and give them a chance to get out and stretch their legs and uh, run a quick race. Second event of the weekend for UTRGV Cross Country was up at Texas A&M. A difficult competition, but still some really good performances. How about Teresa Sova? 75 second improvement over her career best time. And Jennifer Zapata did the same 35 second improvement as they came in 52nd and 55th. Jose Juan Wells led the way on the men's side and Rick Montero was right behind him with a career best of his own. So we sent uh, some of the older ones uh, up to uh, Texas A&M to compete uh, at their Invitational. Uh, again, some stiff competition. Some of the best teams in our region were there. So um, had a chance to really kind of measure ourselves immediately uh, and give us a preview of kind of where they're at and where we're at, you know, before we get to the regional meet uh, a few weeks from now. So again, tough competition out there. They went out there and they you know, ran hard. Uh, we're certainly looking forward to the next few weeks of training and competing um, before we show up again and compete. Want to help prepare our student athletes for excellence in life? Then it's time to become a part of something bigger and support V Nation by joining the V Club. You can become a member of the V Club for just $100 a year. All of the proceeds go directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit utrgvnation.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others. Just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. Plenty on tap in V-Nation this week, including four home events in the span of four days. UTRGV Volleyball gets things started with its WAC home opener Thursday at 7 against Missouri-Kansas City, with women's soccer following suit against Grand Canyon the next night. Back to volleyball Saturday at noon against Chicago State, before women's soccer closes out the weekend Sunday at 1 against CSU Bakersfield. In the meantime, men's soccer is off to Grand Canyon and UNLV, while women's golf travels to New Mexico State. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in V-Nation this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then... We play for you! strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us. Our professors and peers. 
our coaches and teammates, and our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference.